What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel everyone. In today's quick tutorial, we'll be doing the part two of the MBU6050 angle series with the ESP32 microcontroller, where in part one, we showed you guys how to get the angles accurately using the I2C devlib with the Arduino framework. And this video, what we'll be showing you instead is an extension of that with the same code, some modifications. And instead, we'll be using the processing open source software with the Toxic Libs library to create this 3D representation of your device on the screen that interprets the angles in real time from the device and changes angles based on the movement of your device so you can have a nice visual representation and have a sanity check for the results you're getting from your MPU 6050. So this is what we'll do and in this video you'll be able to have the same graphical representation here that will move as your MPU 6050 is moving as you can see here which is pretty cool. So we're just going to jump into that and if you haven't already please be sure to watch part one because this is an extension of part one. So if you haven't watched part one you will be a little lost and other than that be sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel before we get into it we are approaching a thousand subscribers and we will be doing a quick giveaway these shilla tech hoodie these are new hoodies very unique it's our first uh, merch drop and we'll be giving it to three lucky subscribers who are commenting on the videos in this channel so make sure to comment down below as well and subscribe and enough being said let's jump straight into it Okay, so in order to get started with this, the first thing we want to do is download the free software from processing.org, which is another uh, integrated IDE that allows us to run code to create the graphical representation as you saw on the screen or other animations. So it's really easy to download. Just go to processing.org slash download and I'll have this link in the description down below. And just make sure you set it up. It should be a matter of minutes uh, once you go through this link. Thing we have to do after downloading the processing software is you want to download one of the required libs in the processing software script that we're going to run and that library is called toxic libs and you could just download the version i use in this link i'll link this down in the description below i had a lot of quirks in setting this up because the library seems like to be all over the place it's on github it's on bitbucket but after dealing with some guy on reddit who helped me find this link i downloaded this toxic libs complete 0021.zip and then once you have the download you just want to unzip it and we're gonna want to go into that folder and the only two subfolders we need in this library is the toxic libs p5 and the toxic libs core. So let's just do that and we're just gonna copy that over and you're gonna want to go to the processing folder which is where you downloaded processing on your PC, Mac or Linux. And on a Mac, I'm just gonna go to documents and I'm gonna go to the processing folder and we're going to go to libraries and libraries is where you have all of the the libraries you have for your processing scripts so in this case i'm just going to open that and you can see i already dragged it over in there so that's all you're going to have to do and if you are running this while your processing software is open you're actually going to have to restart processing so it can set up the software or the libraries in in processing itself or else it will not be able to recognize them at least not in my case i had to restart processing in order for it to recognize these folders. So now you have the setup in terms of the libraries. Let's jump back into the Arduino code on the platform IO side and do a couple quick things before we jump back into the processing code. Okay, so jumping back to the platform IO side of things with the script we worked with in part one, you're just gonna want to go down in this script and you're gonna want to comment this line here, the output readable yaw pitch roll, and you're gonna want to uncomment this define output teapot. And what we're doing by this is we're changing the output format so it can be interpreted by the animation on the processing side as opposed to being printed in the serial monitor which you saw in part one and also one thing you'll note here it's called teapot and you may be wondering why it's called teapot well i believe when this example was first created it was actually a teapot on the screen as opposed to a plane which you saw in the beginning of this video and so for those of you guys who are watching this maybe you still have the teapot animation but we're using the plane animation but it's famously still called the teapot example for the mpu 6050 so it has nothing to do with the actual code itself it's just sort of a legacy thing where it's called teapots and so one thing we want to do as well is we want to make sure that the baud rate is 9600. So just make sure it's 9600. And we just want to remove any delay in the code. So I believe in part one, I talked about adding a one second delay just so we can have a slow output on the screen. But in this case, we can just go ahead and remove any delay we added because we want the animation to be smooth and responsive to the angle changes. And that being said, we can just save this code and upload it to our ESP32. And the next thing we want to do is once it's uploaded, we don't want to touch anything else on the platform IO side. We just want to copy this mputpot.pde file that they give us as well in this I2C devlib library. So let's just go ahead and copy the contents. And we could just open the processing software, which we downloaded. 
So let that open. And for some reason, it just doesn't open the first time on my Mac. It's, it's really weird. So we can see processing, we can just do new. And we're just gonna do a sketch and we can just copy all of the content in. And just starting from the top here, we're not gonna get into the specifics of this code. There is a lot here, but we can see that it imports the Toxic Libs library, which we set up. And that actually took me a lot of time. So show some love if you're watching this video and you had the same issue because I know a lot of people were asking about that on the internet and they couldn't figure it out. But it was just moving specific folders around. And the only thing we want to change really is this port name. So I'm just gonna uncomment this and comment this. And we can just get the port of our ESP32 by going into VS Code and scrolling up a little bit and seeing that the auto detected, it detects the port. And we can just copy that in here. If you're using a Windows, the port format is different or Linux. So just keep that in mind. And we just copy that in there. And of course, we also want to change the baud rate to 9600 to match the, the baud rate that we set on the platform IO side. And this should be it in terms of all the steps. Now we can just upload it to or process it with the, the run button. And it should be able to get data from the MP650 and we can confirm that in the serial output here. It does take some time initially. And we can see it printed a list of serial objects. So if you're having issues finding yours, you can maybe get it from this list and just copy it in there. And we can see that it is printing it to the serial monitor in some weird format, which I don't know why, but that's okay for the sake of this video. So going back to the front here, we can see that the animation looks to be booted. So we can start moving our MPU 6050 around and it's on my breadboard. I'm just spinning it on my desk. So it looks like everything is making sense, which is awesome. I hope the same for you as well. And I'll just move this once again in front of the camera so we can pitch it up and down. And we can see that it's being responsive perfectly and we could roll it over just like that. And overall, I think that's pretty awesome how this library includes all of this stuff for us to visualize MPU 6050 data and get accurate angle data, which is a very hard thing to do in real time with this awesome animation. So if you like this video and it was useful to you or you learned something new, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Once again, we are approaching a thousand, so it'd be awesome if you could subscribe. Let me know if you're having any issues in the comment section down below. We went over a lot. We went over a bunch of new things on this channel that we never went over before. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching and take it easy.